All right, our last inequality section is going to deal with solving inequalities. And what I want to highlight for you is that we're not going to spend a lot of time on this video. I, don't, I mean, enough to get the point across. But solving inequalities is exactly like you would solve a regular equation like we've been doing so far. Um, except for when you're solving an inequality, you're going to get a greater than or a less than or a greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, meaning there's a lot of different answers that could possibly work. I mean, you'll come up with one answer with the inequality, but like if your answer is x is greater than 7, that means that anything bigger than 7 will work for the equation. When we were doing the regular equations, it was always equals this, which means that's the only thing that would work. The biggest difference when you are solving these, and this happens, you know, every once in a while, because sometimes, you know, you divide or multiply, like your last step, usually you end up with something like this for your last step. Um, uh, when we were doing the regular equations, where you had to end up dividing by a negative number. Um, on these, if you end up having to multiply or divide at the very end by a negative number, we've got to flip around the inequality sign. And that's something that you just have to remember to do. Um, for instance, what I'm talking about here, and well, I'll give you plenty of examples, but let's say we end up with something like this. Negative 2x uh, is greater than 10. Okay. Now, you know that five, you know that negative 5 is going to go in here because negative 2 times negative 5 equals 10. But what I'm saying is that it, this last step would indicate that I'd have to divide by negative 2 to cancel that out, and then I'd have to divide this side by negative 2, which would get me negative 5. Uh, so you would think it would be x is greater than negative 5. What I'm telling you is if you end up dividing by a negative, or you'll see this later too, multiplying by a negative, then you've got to flip that sign around. So the end result is not going to be a greater than sign. Uh, it's actually going to be this flipped around, which would be a less than sign. And again, you only flip that sign around if you end up dividing or multiplying by a negative at the very end. We'll come back to this concept a little bit later. We're going to start pretty simple with these here because I want to get more into not so much the solving, but what your answer actually means here. So if this is our equation right here, uh, x minus 4 is greater than 16, our main goal after we get done is to see what numbers will fit in here to make this number sentence true. So again, what I would do to solve here, this would be pretty simple. That would just be a plus 4 um, to cancel that out, which would be a plus 4 over here. That's going to be 20. Uh, so I don't have anything left to do, so that's my end result to my answer. So what I always like to do to make sure that your answer makes sense, because I, don't, I think if you don't do this, you don't really know if your answer makes sense or not. So I just put down the starting equation here, and here's my answer. I write down things that fit into this description. X is greater than 20. So let's say I do, that would be 30. You could do 35. You could do 100. Okay? Then I'll go back to the regular equation and make sure that all those make sense, because they should. If I do 30 minus 4, it's going to be greater than 16. If I do 35 minus 4, it's going to be greater than 16. If I do 100 minus 4, it's going to be greater than 16. So we're saying with this answer, anything that is above 20 is going to work for this equation. For our next one, to solve this one, again, not too difficult, I don't think. Uh, we're trying to get the x by itself on a side, so that would be a minus 5 here to cancel that out, and that would be a minus 5 over here. And I think that's all we really have to do. That's 20 less than or equal to um, x. What I, what I always like to do is I like to put the x first because I think that helps make sense. Um, and anytime you do your work or anything like that, I'm pretty sure that, you know, I know when you get into high school or even when we're doing the IXLs, they'll ask you to put the x first. So I'm just going to transfer that over to what it would be if the x was first and it's not difficult. We just have to make sure the sign is facing the x in the same direction. So it would look like this. Oops, 20. Get a bigger eraser here. There we go. 
So now I'm going to write down, this is my answer right here. So we're saying that anything bigger than 20 or equal to 20 will fit our original equation. So let's write that down here. 25 less than or equal to 5 plus x. So since it says or equal to, that means if I put 20 in here, it should make sense. 5 plus 20 is 25. 25 is less than or equal to those added together, which would be 25. So that makes sense. Uh, I should also be able to do anything that is bigger than 20 as well. So if I did 25 here, 25 is less than or equal to, and that would be 30, which is true. 25 is less than or equal to 30. So this set right here is the group of answers that would work for you. All right, next one. Not difficult, um, but again, at the end, we just want to make sure that it makes sense. So I do minus 7 here. Uh, let's see, minus 7 here. Uh, if I do the takeaway 7, and I do the takeaway 7, 23 minus 7 is going to be 20, and 4 would be 16. Okay, not quite done yet. Now, here is a situation of, where I said that if you divide by a negative, we're going to have to flip this sign around because this would be a divide by negative 2 to cancel it out. So if I do divide by negative 2 here, uh, my answer is going to be x, flip the sign around, 16 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 8. So here's my final answer for this. And I should have been doing this earlier in the video, but I am going to ask you to graph these as well because I think that really helps to show... Um, what works and what doesn't here. So I'll just put negative 8 here, negative 9 would be here, negative 7 would be here. I need x to be less than or equal to negative 8. So that would be closed circle because it's or equal to and then less than negative 8. So that means anything that is pointing in the direction of this arrow and negative 8 will work for our original situation up here. And then let's try it. If I put negative 8 in here, Negative 8 times negative 2 uh, is 16, positive 16. Positive 16 plus 7 is 23. 23 is greater than or equal to 23. Now let's say I bump that number up that I use. Let's say instead of using negative 8, I go up to negative 9 because it should work because anything above negative 8 and negative 8 should work. So if I do negative 9 here, negative 2 times negative 9 would be positive 18. Positive 18 plus 7 is 25. So now if I think about it, 25 is greater than or equal to 23. True. So I know that this would be the situations that would fit up here. All right, this one right here. Last example before you do some on your own. And again, I'm asking you to graph it, and I'm asking you to go back and make sure that it makes some sense. So if I do 5 to the third power, we better just get rid of that first. That's 125, 5 times 5 times 5, um, and I'll just rewrite it like this. Okay, This would be our next step right here, minus 3. Uh, and then we would need to do minus 3 over here, which is going to be 122. So now I've got this. And this is really easy. I know a lot of people always have questions because we haven't talked about this very much. Well, this should be pretty easy money right here. This is divided by 7, so the opposite is going to be times by 7. So if I do times by 7 here, opposites cancel out. And then on this side, I just need to also do a times by 7. And I also need to figure out what 122 times 7 is. So when I just do that in here, 122 times 7, 854. So I would have 854 greater than x. And I don't want to write it like that. I want to write it with the x first. So let's transfer that. x less than or equal to 854. So if I make my number line, uh, 854, 855, 853. Okay, Open circle. It's not or equal to. And then it should be x is, it has to be less than that. So if x is less than that, oh, wait a minute. Yep, x is less than that. Uh, so I'm just going to draw my, I was looking up at this one right here, but I remember that we switched it in the other direction, so the x was first. So anything less than this 
should work in our equation. So let's go back and try it just to make sure. Okay, so let's pick something that's less than 854. And it could be anything that's less than 854. So you got a lot of choices. Um, let's just say I go with 500. Okay, so if this is 5 to the third power, that's 125. Okay, and let's do over here. Let's say instead of x, I put in, let's say I do 500. 500 divided by 7. 500 divided 7 is about 71. Okay, that's fine. So about 71. So this would be about 71. And then 71 plus 3 is 74. Now I look at this, 125 greater than 74. So the number that I put in there worked. So anything less than 854 would work in the original equation. All right. These four, uh, I would like you to try on your own and see what you come up with. Just some keys to keep in mind here. In the end, what I'm asking you to do is, whatever you get for your answer, make sure you write it as if x was first. So if you end up with something like this, 32 is greater than x, write it the opposite direction just so the x is first. Write it as x less than 32. Keep in mind, when you flip it around like this, the, the mouth is still eating the 32 no matter which way you do it. I'm just putting the X first here. Uh, other things to remember, make sure that you graph them. Make sure that you find a number that fits on your graph and try it in the equation. And lastly, but this wouldn't happen lastly, I guess, while you're doing the equation, if you ever multiply or divide um, by a negative number, you've got to flip the symbol. You've got to flip the symbol. Okay, Give these a try. We'll come back and see how you did.